I want to build a handle workbench later this year, so I've been keeping my eye out for some good lumber. A few weeks ago, someone in my area was having trees removed from the yard and was kind enough to let me harvest some of the red oak left behind by the tree service company. The problem is, this needs to dry before I can use it. I built four of these raised garden beds last year and thought one of them could be reworked into a solar kiln. I picked this one because it faces south towards the sun. Now, my priorities with making the solar kiln are economy and efficiency over performance. I'm not trying to build anything professional quality, I just want something that's going to be quicker than air drying and also inexpensive. That said, I'll probably make some improvements on this over time because I have other wood that I'd, I'd like to dry and I like to pick up found wood. At the end of the video, I'll talk about some of the things that I could do to make this more effective later if I choose to. I started with digging out a lot of the dirt so that would, I would have a recess to place my lumber and then I raked up the sides because I'm using the dirt here as an insulator to help hold in the heat. And then I laid down some old cardboard just to make sure if there's any seeds left in here it doesn't sprout through and tear up my plastic. I'm laying down heavy duty plastic here. This is 3 mil and I have it folded over four times so the piece would fit. So it's effectively 12 mil plastic and it serves two purposes. First is to keep the lumber out of the dirt and also as a moisture barrier to make sure that moisture doesn't come out of the ground so that way the area can dry more effectively. And I just staple this into place. I chose black plastic over clear because black helps hold the heat. To keep my drying stock off the ground, I just cut up some 2x4 and I threw them down. Now you can normally get away with using much smaller stickers, down to 3 quarter by 3 quarter or even 1 inch. I just used these because they were easy, and since what I'm trying to dry is very thick and pretty heavy, these are about 8x8 eight eight to 8x10, eight I figured having larger stickers wouldn't be a problem. For the roofing material, I chose to use this clear corrugated plastic, which will keep the rain off but also let the sun in. Now it comes in 12 foot lengths and I don't have a truck or trailer, so I just cut it a size in the parking lot so I could fit it in my car. Good tip, if you need an extra set of hands, a lot of times a clamp will do. I'm just nailing in this board to act as a roof support for the polycarbonate roofing. And these nails, I'm not driving in all the way, I left them out about an eighth of an inch so I can easily pull them out when it's time to take this apart. Now, I wasn't sure how to do my roofing material, so I got to this point and then I just stopped, took a minute, and thought about it to figure out how I needed to proceed. What I ended up doing was marking out where the vertical and angled support is and then cutting those out and notching it so that way I could fit my polycarbonate material underneath it to make sure rain couldn't get inside of where I'm trying to dry the wood. This took a little bit of back and forth but eventually I was able to get a fit I was happy with. And then when I do the other end I just do the exact same thing. This side is close to the ground so to make sure rain doesn't get in I use some plastic material to cover it up and then I also use the roofing material as a guide to see where I needed to put it. Now whenever you do anything like this you always want to make sure that your top material overlaps your bottom material so that way as water runs down it it doesn't run inside and it all stays on the outside. To attach the polycarbonate to the roof support, I drilled a hole in the plastic and then drove nails through. These nails come from the manufacturer. And they have plastic washers on them to make sure rain can't get in through the hole that you drill. The hole needs to be slightly oversized to allow for movement because the plastic doesn't have any give, which is also why you want to drill the hole because trying to drive a nail through it would crack and split it. I chose to use 12 inch plastic and use three layers overlapping to close up the back. I went with the overlapping method instead of having a wide single sheet because that'll help moisture vent out of the kiln. If I decide I want to keep drying lumber after these, one of the first improvements I'll probably make to the kiln 
we'll be replacing all this plastic with actual walls. I went with plastic this time just because it was less expensive and I wanted to keep the budget on this project low and just see how well a very improvised kiln would work. So replacing this with foam board or actual insulated walls would probably work a lot better because it would hold the heat better. Along that line too would be doubling up the roofing by adding some spacing blocks and then another layer of polycarbonate. After that, the next thing that it would really need to step up the game would be adding a fan to increase air circulation inside of the kiln. So with a greater insulation and then improving air circulation, you'd pretty much have a small professional grade kiln and I may make those upgrades. If you have any experience with drying wood in a kiln, please feel free to leave me a comment and let me know. I'm happy to learn more about a good way to make this work. If you enjoyed this, please give me a, a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future content. Also, I recently opened a Patreon, so if you really enjoyed my content, please consider supporting me there. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you.